Hello and welcome back. This is John from OneHourAcademy.com, taking you through Lesson 4, Excel Advanced Functions and Formulas. So before we start this lesson, it's really important that you download this file. Okay, there's a link right above this video that you can use, whether you've got the old Excel or the new Excel uh, version, 2010 or prior. There's a different link to follow to get the file that you need. Basically, that, that way you call it up and you've got on your screen what I'm looking at here on my screen. Uh, alternatively, you could pause the video right now and take a moment to type all this information out, but I'd recommend that you download it instead. It's a lot faster. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll have to come on over to OneHourAcademy.com, go to the Excel course and Lesson 4 right above this video where it's offered. You'll see the link there. All right, so assuming you've got this available, you've got it downloaded, let's take a look at this information. What I've done here is I've put together a mock store with five salespeople just listing the sales of the day. So I had 20 sales on this particular day, and what I've done is I've got the name of the salesperson in column B and the sale amount over here in column C, all the way down. I started to number them here with number one, and what I want to do now is I want to do a formula all the way down, so it goes all the way down to 20. So here's a different kind of formula you can do besides a sum formula. If you go equals, you can start putting in cell references right away. So I want to go like this, equals the cell above, which is A2, plus 1, and I press enter, there's the number 2. I can then take that formula and I can fill it all the way down to Ming here at the bottom, and so I've got my numbers 1 to 20. Okay, let's take a look at the commission rate. The commission rate depends on the sale amount. So at my store, depending on the more you sell, the higher your commission goes. And down here, I'm going to put a table together right now to explain that a bit further. So starting at zero, your commission is 15%. If your sale is 100, your commission is going to be 18%. At 200, we're going to type in 0 0.21. 300, it kicks into 23%. 400 is 25%, and it maxes out at 500 and the commission rate is a full 27%. That's to give my employees incentive to sell more. So what I want to do here is use a formula called VLOOKUP. And what VLOOKUP does is it looks at this table, or any table that you've put somewhere on your spreadsheet, and it takes the value next to it and figures out what the lookup value should be. So here's what the formula looks like. Equals VLOOKUP. So you just type VLOOKUP, bracket, First comes the value that you're going to use to look up in the table. So here it's it's the, the next door cell, C2. Then I go comma. Now it's looking for the lookup table. So I'm going to use my mouse and highlight this little table over here that I just created. Okay, just the numbers. You don't need the title up above. And um, at this point, the other thing you got to do is press F4. Watch what happens to my green cell reference up here when I press F4. Boom. Dollar signs everywhere. Okay. There's a reason for that, which I'm going to explain later, but for now you need to put that in and just trust me. The last thing we need is a 2. That means in the lookup table, it's column 2 that has the value I want looked up and brought back here. So not column 1, but column 2. I'm going to press another bracket and then press Enter, and we get 23%. Is that the right value? Well, let's take a look. According to my table, 300 to 400, 23% is the actual commission, and that's exactly what it looks up over here. In fact, if I fill this down now, it's going to look up the right commission rate for every one of these transactions. Look at that, all the way down, every one of these works. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this dollar sign. I'm going to click on uh, Bob's, sale number 18. I'm going to double click on the VLOOKUP formula. Look at what it looks like here. Okay, It's looking at C19, but it's using the same lookup table, G15 to H20. Okay, So what the dollar signs did is it froze that cell reference. When I fill this down, I don't want the cells of the lookup table to change, so I put dollar signs around everything so that it freezes it. Okay, and we want the same lookup value for all of our employees, so we make sure to use the dollar signs there so that th those cells don't change as I fill down. The first cell, the C19, I didn't put dollar signs there because I did want that cell to change as I filled down. So, so it did, whereas the lookup table did not. All right, over here we go to commission. This is a straight multiplication formula. And again, this is one of those ones that doesn't require a sum or a max or an average or any kind of a function name. We're just multiplying this cell times this cell to get the actual commission. So it's a really straightforward equals. You click on the first cell. You hit the times key, which is the little asterisk on the keyboard. And then you hit the, uh, the next cell, and you press Enter. 
So there's the actual commission that Bob earned on his sale. I can fill that all the way down. And there's my commissions for all of my transactions for the day. Over here, what we have is a nice little summary of the different salespeople. And we're going to count how many sales each salesperson got and add up the commissions for each salesperson for the day. So the first column involves what's called a count if function. So I'm going to go equals count if. And what I'm saying is count this cell if a certain criteria is met. So if I put a bracket here, the first thing I want to do is put my range in of the salespeople and the list of all the sales they made. So I highlight that over there and I press F4 again because when I go to fill this formula down, I don't want that cell reference to change. I want it to be frozen there. Then I go comma, and the criteria is the salesperson's name over here. So we can just type it out if we want to as G3 because that's where the salesperson name is. And if I press enter, I get five. In other words, Bob was found five times in this list over here. I can fill this down and it's going to count for everybody over there. And if you want to double check, like Henry, for example, gets one. If you come over here, you're going to see Henry come up as sales number 15, and that's the only place Henry shows up. So he only gets one sale for the day. The total commission is sort of like a count if, but it's called sum if. So if I go like this, equals sum if bracket. Okay, so I'm going to use the same range over here of the salespeople. And I'm going to press F4 again to freeze it. Comma criteria is the same as before. So I'm looking for Bob in that range. And then another comma. And what, what I put in here is the range of cells that I'm going to try to sum, given that it's looking for Bob in the first column. So if I highlight these here, and then press, oh, and F4, because I want to freeze those as well, because they don't want to change as we go down. And then if I press Enter, this 508 represents all of the sales that were just made by Bob. Pretty handy formula. I'm going to fill this down, and there we go. So we've summed the commission for every salesperson based on the criteria of matching their name here, and then taking the sale in column E and adding them all together. Okay, very handy formula. So we've covered VLOOKUP over here, we've covered the COUNTIF formula, and we've covered the SUMIF formula. I want to go to a second example for my final example. This is another formula that a lot of people use, especially with household finances and especially borrowing money and paying back loans. So if you just come down to the bottom here, I'm just going to bring this up a bit so that you can see it. Okay, so example two is the one I'm looking at. So if you click down here on example two, you're going to see uh, another example started. And uh, we're going to use this information here to calculate the monthly payment on a loan. Okay, so when you borrow money, there's three factors that go into consideration to calculate the monthly payment. Obviously, the amount of money you borrowed is a factor. The interest rate that you're paying is a factor. And the, the length of time you're taking to pay the loan off. So this is a scenario for a 20-year mortgage, $200,000 at an interest rate of 0.35 or 3.5%. Okay, decimal 035. So to figure out the monthly payment on this, we're going to use the PMT function. So we go like this, equals PMT bracket. Okay, the first thing it's looking for is the rate. So here's the rate here. I can click on the cell. Okay, but what we're looking for is the monthly rate because this is a monthly payment. So that's an annual rate of 3.5%. So we have to divide that by 12. Next comes N per, which is the number of periods of the loan. So it's 20 years, but remember, there's 12 periods per year. So for this number, we have to multiply it by 12 to get the number of months of the loan. Third comes the present value, which is uh, how much we're borrowing. So if I go negative and click the borrowed rate, because we borrow the money, so it has to go in as a negative, and I close my bracket, and there's my monthly payment. The cool thing about this formula is that it points to these three different cells, and we can change any of these and get a new monthly payment. So for example, what if I wanted to make this a car loan? Obviously, I'm not going to borrow $200,000 for a car unless it's a DeLorean or something like that. Say I borrow $15,000. Interest rate on a car is usually a little bit higher than it is for a mortgage. So let's say we borrowed it from the bank and it's a used car. So they're offering us, say, 7.9% financing. So that would be a decimal 079. 
we're not going to take 20 years to pay off a car loan, but we might take five. So I'm going to put a five in here for the number of years. And with those three bits of information, it comes back with $303.43. So it's a very handy formula. You can see it up here. It's the um, monthly interest rate, the number of months in the loan, and as a negative value, the amount that we are borrowing. And you can plug any of those three things in and change the loan up, whether it be a mortgage or a car loan or a credit card loan, and you'll get a new monthly payment. So that's a lot of work for one lesson, but we're getting up to the 11 minute mark. So I'm going to stop now and um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Got one lesson to go. Next lesson, we're going to do working with multiple workbooks. So hope to see you back for that. And uh, after that one lesson, you'll be an official graduate of onehouracademy.com with the Excel lessons. Thanks. Bye for now.